How's it going, Torian? Good to see you again. Um, you know, you, you go through it every year where you have some attrition, you lose some players, you lose a guy like Jalen. Uh, is there a one guy that, that that you know right now that's going to be the guy I'm going to depend on to replace Jalen? Interesting question. Uh, you lose a guy like Jalen Foster. He brought so many intangibles and so much production and leadership with the group. That's not an easy thing to lose. Between R.J. Roderick, he's, he decided to come back for another year with us, and I, he'll, he'll do great. He's embracing the leadership role there. A pleasant surprise has been Devonnie Reed um, coming in from Central Michigan and giving us a, another guy who's very mature, very professional. He'll, he'll go a long way and help leading the group. And then Darius Rush and Cam Smith are guys that are maturing and learning how to be leaders and lead the other guys. So I'm excited about the prospects of the group from that standpoint. Turing, certainly there's, there are, uh, there's new guys in the room. You know, they had some transfers that came in. There was just so many new faces last year. But what have you noticed of just the, the attitude about that room going into spring ball this year in comparison to where it was a year ago when you guys first arrived? Last year, it was so many unknowns. This year, we've been through a season. We've been through the fire together. We've been through an off season, spring ball, summer, fall camp, and then a full season together. So. We're familiar with everything. We're year two into the system, so the familiarity and the starting point and the expectations, there's there's nothing to guess. At this point, it's fair to say they, they trust us and they trust our process and what we're doing and everything. So it's just it's like we're so much more advanced. Last year, none of the guys, RJ and Foster, had a lot of experience playing. Really, none of the other guys had played a lot, so there was a lot of unknowns like, you know, how these guys are going to play, how they're going to react in these situations. So now you got guys between Rush and Cam who've played a lot. Marcellus Dallas played a lot. He didn't play a snap last year before he got here. You know, um, David Spalding's going to have some experience. You know, he didn't have any experience last year. So we're just a totally different group from that standpoint. And like I said, you got RJ Roderick back and and then you bring in Devonnie Reed, a guy who's got a lot of experience. We're just, from an experience standpoint, we're a lot further ahead in a football maturity standpoint and the expectations and what it takes to play at the level we want to play at. All that's just so far from last year. I know they're probably trying to drink water through a fire hose, but what have you seen from Anthony Rose and, and Peyton Williams in the time you've been able to work with them? <laughs> drink water through a fire hose, whatever that analogy is, that's probably what's going on with those guys right now. Well, it's hard for, uh, uh, you know, those guys technically should still be in high school, but they're going to be good players. But right now you come in in mid-year and, and you're trying to learn a defensive system. You're trying to learn – how to get to your dorm or get to the classroom. They got a lot going on, but I really do like their prospects. They're guys with size, they're guys with length, guys with athletic ability. And once they learn how to play football, they're really going to um, be able to contribute to us. Right now, they're, they're just in the process of learning. Tori, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like Cam was working out of the nickel a little bit, at least in the little bit that we've seen. I guess just uh, one, how do you see him kind of fitting there? Is that something you guys are seeing just uh, from a versatility perspective? I know you got, what, six months till you play a game, but like, mm -hmm. I guess, how do you see him fitting in there? And then maybe what are some, uh, what, what do you guys kind of envision for the nickel spot this year? As Interesting far as question um, about the nickel spot. Well, David Spalding had um, the most experience. Him and Collins Partell did a great job at nickel for us last year, and they kind of split it, the um, opportunities with David getting surgery and, and while he's rehabbing, we have to build some depth. So, you know, Cam, he wants to go in there and he wants to play it. And, you know, I, maybe he's looking at it also when he goes to the next level, just having that type of versatility. But he's such a talented kid and a great cover guy and such a smart football player that it actually helps us to have depth moving forward. And then Marcellus Dow, he's a guy who we will want to be able to know from a mental standpoint what's going on. And the more depth we can have at that spot, that just helps us out. Because, you know, you got Marcellus, you got Cam, you got Rush, you got three pretty good guys. So, you know, a way to get those guys right now for the spring all on the field at the same time if they're healthy. Touring USC led the SEC last year in pass defense. How much do you put into that? Do you talk about it with the guys? Is that like a, a bragging point, something that you guys are really proud of? It's 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 an accomplishment, but we 
we, we can look deeper into that stat. Stats, sometimes you can fudge some stats to make things how they want. So we understand that we got to be better at stopping the run. And if we're better at stopping the run, if we're able to stop the run at the level we want to in this defense and still have that stat, then that's very impressive. But we have to contribute on our end from as back-end guys to be able to stop the run. So if we're able to do that better and still be able to be high up in the pass defense, I think that's ultimately where we want to be. Cam Smith obviously had some pretty good advanced metrics from last season in terms of coverage grade against. Just what have you seen jump-wise from him um, from the end of last season to now? And what about his maybe mentality or, or athletic ability gives him the chance to be a number one defensive back on an SEC team? I'm sorry. Um, you started with metrics, then you went yeah, to a couple things. So, okay. What about Cam Smith makes him a good quarterback and someone that you could rely on? Cam is a good cornerback. I mean, Usually, you're, you're very talented players. They have some God-given things that you can't teach. You know, Cam's got good height. He's got good speed. He's got a very good high football IQ. Um, but he loves to compete. He practices hard. And he w legitimately wants to get better. A lot of times, you get guys who have accomplished. He's become an all-SEC defender who accomplished those type of things. And they may come through spring, and you got to kind of hit some buttons on him to, the, to improve and want to get better. But I think he's just naturally wired to, I want to compete, I want to get better. And that's the great thing about him. And again, he's he's immensely talented with a high football IQ. So now him knowing corner and knowing nickel, and he wants to know kind of what everybody's doing on defense. Sometimes you kind of be like, Cam, just just, just do your job. Um, but um, that's, that's not a bad thing. And um, he's really looking for him to elevate his game from a mental standpoint to match his physical abilities. With Darius, can you quantify how much he's just grown as a player from this time last year to now? You can really say that about um, a couple of those guys in that room. Um, like I said, a lot of them hadn't had a lot of experience, but Rush in particular, just from where he started and, you know, he's kind of, finding his way and sorting his way through some things. And you kind of had to guide him through some things. And just to see his growth from last year, I thought was really remarkable. And like a, when, when you look at where he came from to where and how he ended the season, his confidence level is just great because he was able to be productive and make plays. It's one thing to go out there and, hey, I'm confident. But if you don't make the plays or have the production to match it, um, it's sometimes hard to – is it genuine or not to make sure it's genuine or not. So I'm just proud of how he progressed and how he's kind of bought ownership into continuing to want to get better. Um, so it's been impressive to watch. Torian, with the with the question marks that you had going into uh, the secondary last year, I guess kind of take us into your, your mindset a, a little bit. How How did you – try to uh, approach those guys every single day from a <laughs> from a technicality standpoint how, just how do you how do you get guys who are just you know kind of raw and kind of green how do you get them ready to play you know like David mentioned ended up leading the, the SEC in, in pass defense it was a process it was nothing easy um, when you're coming in as a as a new new staff and a new coach and if guys are are used to doing things a certain way you kind of got to work through a process of um, you know, this is how I see this, or this is how we want to do this as a defense staff. For me, as a defensive back coach, this is how I want to work this technique. And if guys have done something before, so it was a it was a lot working through those processes. And and sometimes you got to have some uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable things, like the Georgia game. You got to go through some rough rough situations to get to where we ended up getting. And those guys, we were able to grow from those things. And it's, like I said, it's pretty cool when you see during the season, okay, it was about this game right here that uh, I think we got it. I think we're, you know, understanding what it takes to to at least attempt to be a consistent secondary. So um, the process was, was fun. And now I hope we, we should be at a level now where we can, you know, just continue to be better from there. Hopefully I got your question somewhere in there. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tori, I know you talked about um, Devani and RJ at safety. Who are maybe some guys behind them as you try to build the depth at that spot that you're looking at that you either feel good about or you're saying, you know, maybe you want to step up at that spot maybe? Well, you're as good as your depth. We were fortunate last year that RJ and Foster stayed healthy for most of the year because we didn't have great depth at the safety position. So a great priority right now is to see 
who can give us some depth. And right now you got Tyrese Ross, who's into his second year. So we're hoping he can take a step. You got King Ford, who is in his second year of playing defense, and hopefully he can take a step. You got B.J. Gibson, guys of that nature. Um, you know, Joseph Burns, we need some of those guys to be able, someone to be able to step up and, and give us some support. And then you got to count on, on Peyton Williams, what's going to be his growth potential. Um, a guy like Rose, we started him off at safety. We're probably going to, we just got banked up right now at, at, at the corner spot. So we may look at him at corner right now, but you know, whether he's at corner or safety, and then you got to look at some of your, your signees, but we have to find depth um, at the safety spot. It's going to be a main priority. And it'll be interesting to shake out these last, what, 11 or so practices, who's going to be the guys that step up for us to see who that. I know they're not on campus, but what have you seen? What made you want to recruit guys like Kawan Banks, uh, Keenan Nelson, and Emory Floyd, and how much fighting will you have to do to get Nick Eamon Warrior in the defensive back room? Uh, the beautiful thing is we won't have to fight to get Nick. He's going to be a defensive back for us. And, you know, really, really impressed with all those guys' skill sets. You know, we're – Going through the recruiting process, we just felt those were guys that can come in and help us, and we needed depth at the defensive back position. That's kind of where we, we started with the thing, and going into that class, that's why we signed the number of defensive backs that we did. But all those guys have attributes that are, you know, as long as they can get the learning curve, you know, all of them should have a chance to potentially help us this year, and if not, they're going to be great players once they do learn the system and, and, and really know what they're doing, but excited about all those guys. Turing, kind of what Colin and Wes were asking. I mean, obviously you guys have like, I think like six or seven guys in this class who are technically counted as safeties or listed as safeties. I mean, how much of it is just get those guys in camp and sort of figure <laughs> out where you want to put them? I mean, is it like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I know there are a lot of different body types and a little versatile, but like, I mean, how much, what's that like as a coach to have, you know, that many freshmen to just be sort of throw the board and see what sticks a little bit? Well, um, it's interesting because, you know, it's hard in this conference to, to count on freshmen coming in and, and, and wanting to depend on them. So that's why this spring is big for the guys that we have here. But it's also big right now with those guys not being here that, you know, if we're able to meet once a week or Zoom with them or something like that, that they're brought to speed and somewhat so they're not starting from fret, from scratch once they get here because we're going to – we're going to – all those names I named, we're, we've still got a lot of answers to – who's going to be our, our depth. And, you know, we had a lot of guys. We had a lot of bodies, all those names you mentioned, all the names I mentioned earlier. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to actually be able to step up and help us. You know, we hear from the, from the offensive room about, you know, what Rattler is like, but on the other side of it, from a defensive <laughs> standpoint, you know, what is it like going up against them? And what are you guys noticing in terms of some of the things that makes it difficult for a defense, especially the defensive back room in particular? Well, he's got a... He's played a lot of snaps. Um, obviously, he's got a lot of playing experience, and then he's got a really strong and accurate arm. That's one thing that that you see during these spring practices, and that's awesome. That's great because it's going to make us better as a as a defense. He'll make us better as an offense. So it's exciting to have that guy in, our, in that room over there. Coach, you talked about um, kind of was such a young room. I wanted to know um, who are some of the veteran guys that are stepping up in the leadership positions. I know it's still early in spring practice, but can you kind of give us an idea? Um, the, our, our veteran guys are actually doing a, a, a very good job. We were so inexperienced last year when you look at um, R.J. Roger. He played a lot, but he was not necessarily um, the leader of the room. Foster was the leader of the room. He's kind of embracing that leadership role right now. Devonnie Reed's played a lot. It's coming from Central Michigan, and he's he's a natural leader just the way he's approaching. He's a grown up in the room, so I like that about him. And between him and RJ, um, that's a sol solid foundation. And then, like you say, Cam and Rush, they were very inexperienced guys, so they were just kind of finding their footing. And now they got a year under their belt. They've got success. So now, you know, Rush, you know, I, I hear him talking to the other guys. I hear Cam trying to he's sitting up and he's attentive in the in the meetings and you know he's asking these questions and you know so his his iq is just they lead in their different ways but it's, it's a good core group that's leading to get um together so i'm excited about that which like i say we didn't have last year mm -hmm. 
Torian, I'm curious, did you have any opportunity to, to maybe go elsewhere in your career uh, over the off season? And, and two, why was coming back, staying on Shane's staff and being at South Carolina, why was that the, the right decision for you? We've had success here this past year. Um, so, you know, to be honest, this is where I want to be. I guess to answer this question without getting into a lot of variables or things, um, I love working with Coach Beamer. I love working with Coach White. I love what we did and what we're doing in the direction that we're going. So um, it was a, it was easy and, um, you know, have a passion for being here as much as just like Coach Beamer. So, um, no, it's, it's, it's a great, great. South Carolina's great spot to be right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you.